don't like globalization. But I believe in, we believe in globalization. Globalization actually in the past 30, 40 years helped a lot of countries to grow, especially countries like China. But people don't like it because it's not inclusive. So globalization itself it is good, but how we can improve it, how we can make more developing countries get involved, how we can help a small business get involved, young people get involved. In the past 20 years, the globalization was controlled by 60,000 big companies. So what if we can help 60 million or 60 million small business, any young people that can global buy, global sell? That's something that I think the world trade should be looking like. So I think today because of the technology we have, because of the internet, because of the mobile phones, because of the new infrastructure that we are building up, we think we can help all the small business, young people. If they have a phone, they can global buy, global sell, global deliver, global pay, and global travel having fun. <clears throat> That's the whole vision for EWTP. And I think this is what I talked to WTO. WTO needs to be upgraded to the second version, focusing on developing countries, focusing on the uh, young people, small business. And most of the free trade zones today designed for only big companies. We think there should be free trade zones for small companies to import and export. 24 hours clearance custom office. And if you are below 1 million US dollars exporting to the other countries, should be totally tariff free. And EWTP T refers four T, training, trade, technology, and tourism. So making sure that because the whole world is, is expecting a new form of globalization. I don't think, you know, the model in the past 60 years that all the government make decisions how to do business and the business follow. Next 30 years should be the business make decisions, government supported. So this is EWTP, it's a private driven. And that's why we go one country after one country to convince the country has the vision the convention convincing the government has the wisdom and the courage to support the young people, small business. This is the whole vision. So one person you have convinced is President Kagami. You've signed up for this. Mr. President, why did you sign up and what are the expectations you have of this for Rwanda? Well, to begin with, it was a great opportunity that came our way. Thank you, Zeni, for first of all inviting us here and moderating the session. So when uh, I met uh, Jack Ma and uh, he had already thought through this in a broader sense and uh, was happy to start with Rwanda because of what uh, Jack had observed in terms of the investments we have made uh, in the area of infrastructure and technology and uh, the governance generally thereof that would support this kind of uh, business and relationship and <coughs> transactions. So we have already started and what is happening on the ground is very exciting because the young people and what Jack has just said, this is a relationship that brings in the otherwise marginalized, you know, levels of society, the young people, the farmers, and this has helped bring them uh, in connection directly with the, the consumers. Can, can you give an example? You were, you were telling me earlier about the example of coffee. This, is, this, this initiative was signed in October 2018, so really not very long ago. Yeah. Give us a sense of what on the ground has happened already. Already there is uh, coffee being uh, uh, sold uh, through this uh, e-commerce. Uh, to Chinese to customers. Chinese customers. And what is happening, on average, generally, a coffee farmer or business people were getting around $8 per kilogram. Now they have additional four, which is $12 uh, for every kilogram. And this happens <coughs> very fast and uh, uh, the transactions are, are very uh, beneficial almost in real time. 
So one of the, the ambitious goals of this is that you said it was up to a million dollars in transactions would be tariff-free, and, and you, Mr. President, have, have clearly agreed to that. Uh, do, you, do you think, why did, did you do that because you think that's an important part of a development strategy? There's no question about it. If you look at the number of people who are going to benefit, the young entrepreneurs, uh, these farmers who are involved in, for example, coffee uh, businesses, uh, it, it's all inclusive. The small and medium enterprises are, are benefiting, and these are the majority uh, when it comes to the businesses in any country, you find these ones uh, uh, put together, uh, hold more than uh, any other level that you can think of. And where, Jack Ma, what's the scale of your ambition with this? Um, you, are, you, you, you have signed up a couple of countries so far, you're going country by country, but is your goal to create an alternative global trade system? Well, we want to, at least to giving some um, uh, values to the new global trade system because of the technology. I never expect that uh, Africa could be <clears throat> so huge. This is my, in two years I've been to Africa for three times. And um, when, I, when we started to sell the coffees, 2,000 pack, uh, packages of coffee, we put online and uh, within three days all sold out. And I said, wow. <laughs> and nobody, we even did not have a lot of uh, promotions. I giving the package, some packed coffee to my friends. They tried it and they said, Jack, where did you get this? I said, you know, you guess. <laughs> and I said, Luanda, I said, are you, Really? Then uh, we think this year, at least for coffee-wise, we can sell 120,000 packages. <clears throat> and for those young people, when they have a mobile phones, not only for computer games, not only for making phone call tutors, they should do business. <laughs> so and that's that's what we think is will be covering all the countries. So so <clears throat> let's posit you're successful, and this grows, and is a big part of trade. It's a lot of countries. Um, Mr. President, would you worry about having a trading system focused on one company? Well, before you worry about that, I am happy that what is happening is more inclusive on the other side of the beneficiaries, where, in fact, it has more or less democratized benefits in terms of when I said uh, the small and medium enterprises or other players uh, individually being directly connected with uh, the consumers on the other end and benefiting. I think that's huge. It's, 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 it's like we are here talking about hundreds of millions, later on running into billions of transactions involving more and more people every day uh, in this and benefiting. Before you worry about one individual or one company or two that are doing that, I'm also looking at the benefits on the other end uh, where the, the, the numbers are unprecedented. But would, you, would you want down the road other companies to be doing the same thing? I'm not worried about that. <laughs> I'm worried about the small people. and medium enterprises yeah. and individuals, and there are hundreds of millions and billions getting better for what they are doing. So now That's I'm very good. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Amaya is. First, it's not a one company because we can never deliver ourselves. We don't have a one so people deliver for us. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of deliver company for us. <laughs> we have a lot of payment, the banks get involved, we get a government. But even if one company, if this company can solve the SME problems, young people's problems, job creations, let him do it. That's what I would say. But first, there is no this company in the world. There will be no this one company can do everything. For Alibaba, for EWTP, we said, this is our idea, this is our vision. Nobody believe it. And then we invite people who believe in building it up and get involved. Luana is going to be the most important hub, the founding hubs of the EWTP. One day, there are people who get used to that hub. They will be experts sending expelled to the, all the African. 
So this is this is the concept. This is the the dream. This is not the. I think Alibaba cannot do it alone. We have to partner. Let okay. me give a, another typical example. We, we, we are aware of say global pandemics. You know, there have been diseases affecting millions of people, tens, or hundreds of millions of people. When we get medicine, if we go to medicine and the medicine is accessible, it's affordable by the majority, do I start getting worried about the source of this medicine? Do I start getting worried and say, why does this <laughs> medicine come from one company? No, I'm happy that people are getting treatment and in their numbers and it's accessible and it's affordable. So for me from this end, Maybe for the other end, it's for Jack Ma to answer that question. I was going to quickly but for ask me, from him that. the other side, I'm happy. I was just quickly, and I'm going to then open to the audience. I was going to ask from the other side, when you talk to other potential partners, um, and let's be honest, we are in a world of you know, rising tension on tech matters between the US and China. And as, you know, people talk about a splinter net. There's, is, is your very ambitious global plan viewed in some quarters with more suspicion than you would like? Well, today the world is full of suspicion and uh, full of uh, worries. To me, it's, uh, to us, it's an opportunity. I don't believe over 200 countries, everybody is puzzled. Every, every country is worried. But Europe is something worried to me because the worried worried Europe. The worried worried The worry Europe. worries Europe. <laughs> Right. <laughs> the European people just worry too much. Ah, privacy, ah, security. Is there any rules? What happens if this and that? So I'm happy President Kagame is not following Europe and embrace, embrace the future. Because people here in Europe, I was here, was, uh, everybody talking about how can we regulate it? How can we protect? There's nothing can protect you unless you have the capability of knowing the technology. So that's why we don't go to America first. We don't come to European countries first. We go to the country who believe in first. <laughs> we go to Africa and they say, wow, people say, impossible. How can Africa be successful? I said, I heard this, th this question and challenge again and again when I started my business 20 years ago in Alibaba. Everybody say, how can Alibaba be successful in China? In mean, China, no internet. Government banning, rules, laws, no credit cards, no logistics. We say, if there's no, let's build it. If there's no credit card, let's build a payment system. If there's no logistic system, let's build a logistic system. So we are not fighting for tomorrow. EWTP will never be success tomorrow or today. We'll probably succeed in 10 years. 20 years. So we should have, uh, if you have a patience, we believe if you really create value for the others, more people are joining. So this is always we believe. I'm, I'm, I have lots more questions I'd like to ask you, but I think I'm going to open now to the audience. Yes, gentleman here, second row. Uh, hi, my name is Could you briefly introduce yourself and keep it brief? Hi, my name is Youngmin. I'm Global Shaper from Korea. Uh, personally, I'm working for Google. I have uh, many questions about tech industry happening, happening right now. As you know, as digitalization is accelerating, we produce more and more data. But the thing is, the data itself is collected and centralized to specific country and specific company. So um, how can you think, uh, how can you solve this like, data centralization issue? Thank you. <coughs> data you center like centralization. centralization. Do you want well, to take that or should we? Yes, very briefly, and then we'll move on. Yeah, I think um, first, everything we worry today will be solution. If we cannot solve it, somebody will. If I cannot do it, my kids will do it. But if you don't do it, then there's no problem, there's no hope. So I don't worry about that. Most of the Government today worry about the data, privacy, security, centralizations. It's just the beginning of the data period. Give another five years, you will find things will completely change. Thank you. There's a lady here at the front row. Hi. 
Hi, Maliha Kadir. I'm a YGL from Bangladesh. I have a technology startup where we are doing ride sharing and various consumer centric services online. So I'd be curious to hear about um, your experience from the early days of China. If there's one factor that you had to pick that really spurred consumer adaptation where the hockey stick came, what would that be? Well, unfortunately, at the beginning of Alibaba business, uh, no people come to buy. A lot of people come to sell. And we buy all the garbage they sell <laughs> to tell them it works. <laughs> and then more people start to sell good things. And then the system goes. Very important is making sure because, you know, first, uh, um, I remember the first month, um, we saw a lot of sellers on our site. And the things that we don't know what, nobody will buy them. So we buy them because the price was low, they're testing. So we buy them, put in the other room, we never open it. And then people say, wow, it really works. And then the system starts to work. So, and then you improve your products, your services. There it goes. Thank you. Very concrete. <coughs> yes, lady, the, the check jacket. Yeah. And then. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Erich from the Bahrain Development Bank. Um, I just sort of have a comment and maybe just sort of a curiosity to say that um, in regards to you know, being afraid of just one company. I think there always has to be the first person that does it, and then I think that there may be other platforms will follow. I think the other point is, is that in terms of, is there a plan of integrating? For example, you said you can't do it all yourself. Would there be a plan to help create those side businesses that can help support the platform um, in Rwanda? And, and is there a plan for that from, from the way you're coming in and your experience, or is that just gonna come organically? That's a very good question. I, we, we, are very, we are very sure EWTP should be an ecosystem. We are building up a platform, so make bringing more people. <coughs> Luckily, we have uh, President Kagame's um, uh, courage and say, government will do anything to support their own country, uh, Luanda's young people, small business, and you know, custom office, what all the things. And then the next step we do is to do a lot of training. We invited, uh, and actually, uh, President just sent a 20, uh, uh, very high level uh, Rwanda minister levels to come to Hangzhou, our base, that we're training them for, ten, for, for one week. And the other job I'm doing is that we are accepting 500 uh, entrepreneurs in Africa in the next three, four years, and then sending them back. They are the seeds. They're going to train the trainers. They know how to do business. And then we were also encouraging the, all the logistics company. The other challenge that probably I will discuss with the president later is about how we can, there are over 40 or 50 countries in Africa. Every country have a board and rules and how can we do the transport logistic freely, right? So when we arrive in Rwanda, it's okay. But how about the Rwanda go to uh, uh, Kenya and Kenya to the uh, uh, Ghana, you know? This is, a, this is a great opportunity in the world, mm -hmm. in Africa. 1.2 billion people, they need, need, they need the things to move fast. This need the government coordination. President Kagame, maybe you'd like to add to that, what, yes. both on the complementary policies and this really important question of how this works across African countries. Yes, I was going to come to that. If you look at uh, the e-commerce as, as has been working, and you see, uh, for example, that uh, the online transactions uh, Africa benefits uh, about $10 billion, and yet these are trillions of dollars uh, uh, on the market. <coughs> so there is a lot of work to do. There is a lot of uh, growth space to be undertaken in this, because it involves about 30 to, uh, 20 to 30 million people in Africa, yet there are billions across the world. So we need to grow that, both in terms of money and the people who are using that. But at the same time, if you look at how Africa is moving forward, recently we had, in, uh, we agreed and signed the African Continental Free Trade Area, which covers 44 countries of 55. So that's good progress. Yet we are yet to consolidate the 44 countries uh, sort of uh, customs union. Uh, 
but that has implications and the, therefore uh, uh, the, these transactions as they happen are playing into a much bigger market and recently there is also another move to create a, a single digital identity that will bring in all uh, Africans and have standardized policies to do with that. All that serves these kinds of... Uh, Helps that make that much easier. It makes it much easier. So already things are happening within the countries themselves, but then across Africa... So, so your, your, the end goal would then be a free trade area, particularly for small businesses, done with digital identity cards yes. across Africa. Yes. That's a pretty bold goal. Yes, lady here, second row. My name is Funela Munjane. I'm a glo young global leader from South Africa. Uh, two questions. Firstly, just to confirm that while at the beginning the flows would be between Africa and China, that this can end up being a platform that helps <laughs> Africans trade with one another. The second question, President Kagame, what advice would you give to other presidents on the continent who might be reluctant to, to join the platform? Yeah, so first question, yes, it is from China to Africa first, because China has 1.4 billion people. And China, I convinced my ministers and prime ministers, is it give us some chance to, to test, right? So they say, all right, this is the first time they, they give us the experience to test. So we, we import more from Africa. But every hub finally will connect. So we have a hub in Africa, Rwanda. We have a hub in Belgium. We have a hub in Malaysia. We hope from Rwanda to Malaysia to Belgium, in, in the future maybe Thailand, we'll also do things like that. And then there will be more hubs in Africa. And then Africa internal can go. All the hubs will be connected. That's the plan. Yeah. Mr. President, what would your advice be to perhaps more reluctant presidents? No, I think the best way to approach it is to, and maybe to deal with any other problem like that, is to show people what they benefit by doing certain things yeah. and what they lose by not doing so. This is the only thing we, we can do, There's another, and I'm sure all African leaders and other Africans want what works for them, uh, what can benefit them. I, I think there are many cases we can learn from before uh, where Africans have come together and have agreed uh, to do certain things because they know that is what uh, the Africans want and that's what benefits them. So I think the discussions are already ongoing. This is why in forging an African continental free trade area, there were discussions before that. They understand the implications, they understand the benefits. So that's why so many signed up. In a single day, we had 44 countries of 55 signing up to that. The others, I'm sure, will be coming on board. Maybe they have different issues they have to overcome as, as we get along. So. It's not that we wait for everybody before we move forward, but we move forward with those who can and want to move forward, but we keep trying to show the others that if we moved together, these are the benefits. If we don't, these ones benefit and these ones don't. So that, that's what we are doing. Thank you. There was another question here. Yes, lady in the second row, and then gentleman in the third row. It's actually a question to both of you. I'm from India uh, in healthcare, but it's not related. Uh, to this. Uh, Jack Ma, what would be, you know, I love your vision and, and you make it sound so credible if possible, but what is the uh, country risk, the political risk, and that's what I would ask you also. Suppose, you know, at the next president doesn't subscribe to this, that's one, and, and I think that we've seen that in India that opened up e-commerce and really adopted it, and all of a sudden, you know, the pressure of the local traders that said, uh, this doesn't work for us, and all of a sudden, they've changed the rules. So what happens at that time? Great question. Jack <clears throat> Well, that is why I'm quite busy flying around and meeting all the presidents and PMs. <laughs> <laughs> and my colleagues are, are you a business people or are you a politician? You're talking to everyone. Um, in Africa, the hope for every developing country is the four E. I say four T's and four E's. E first 
You have to have education. Every country from now on have to think it through that the current education system that we teach our kids will not be able to create jobs for our kids in the future. Because robots, artificial intelligence, they will be much smarter. So everything you teach the kids how to remember, how to calculate faster, is gone. So the education. Second E is entrepreneurs. We have to have a lot of entrepreneurs who believe in the future. And the entrepreneurs believe in the future than most of the other. If they do not believe in the future, they will never be a, become an entrepreneur, right? The next is infrastructure, not infrastructure. <laughs> we should put electronic infrastructure, right? So making sure that every, every young people can be able to reach the internet. It's as important as the, uh, and the fourth is e-government. We are pushing government on the internet. So, I'm meeting, I met over 20,000 government officers two years ago, in one year. That's just like I'm meeting government officers every day. <laughs> My job is don't want, I don't want any policy, any anything, just to, you know, this is the way we do business. And then you see the young people, the young government officers, mm -hmm. they start using mobile phone, they think it's good. And it will come. But by saying one thing, the policymakers, this is what exactly happened. This is a human being always happened. In 1860s, there's a, there's a bill in a, in, a, in a UK called the Red Flag Bill. You know, that, that is uh, when car was built. The horsemen, at that time, called white collar person. They hate this. They went to the government and say, stop the cars. The cars will kill people on the road. And if you, have, if you let the cars come, all the horsemen are losing jobs. The society is going to... Then the government passed a bill called the red flag. There is a red flag in front of every car that you are not allowed to drive more than seven miles per hour. And you have to follow a, a horse. That stopped the industry. So this is what I think a, a lot of government is doing that. And our job is to make them online so they cannot do that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Well, on, Mr. On, on, my part, uh, on my part, I'm in the politics but without the standard the definition of being a politician. Because I understand also that my reason for being in politics is actually to enable business people do business and succeed. Second, people are elected, they become leaders because the, among other things, tell people what they intend to do, they want to bring change, or no change to something. But the voters also, who vote people out of power or bring them to power, do so on the basis of what they believe in, whether this change is good for them or uh, the status quo isn't good for them. So, and you are right in saying that in most of these things we do, there is a need for predictability, there is a need for sustainability. But the fact is, I think with what is happening, once the people are benefiting, then they will want to stay with the kind of things that benefit them. Uh, in this case, where the small and medium enterprises and the people involved and the jobs that are involved, uh, once they've been created and they have tested that, do they really want this to be changed? If there comes a leader who wants to change this, maybe actually he won't come in the first place. He will not elect this leader. Or if he's there, if he wants to change these things that benefit them, he may end up in trouble. <coughs> so, but we have to do what we think is good, good. and works. And yeah, this, is, it. this is an extraordinarily bold initiative. I know there are lots of other questions. I'm so sorry we're out of time. So unfortunately, we have to leave it there. But um, at a time when, as you say, there is a lot of worry in Europe, it is great to hear uh, such a bold and ambitious strategy. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. If you would just wait and let, and let our two speakers leave, that would be great. Thank you.